This is the True American Podcast. I'm your host. As I often say, I usually just cover on this podcast local and state issues, but this Kylie Irving thing has really gotten my goat, and uh, boy, I just I just keep going in on it. Now, my other podcast, Book Talk with Corbin, I will be uh, talking about the book that's sort of, I guess you might say, is really on the periphery of this controversy. And that name of that book is From Hebrews to Negroes, uh, Black America Wake Up. And um, I ordered the book. I'll be honest with you folks. I'm going to tell you something. If Kylie Irving had ever tw- tweeted a link, and I got it, and it was a link about a, a movie or something, I probably would have ignored it. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't follow Kylie because I'm interested in his political views or historical views or whatever, nothing like that. I'd follow him because he's a fantastic basketball player. And I'd like to know what he has to say about basketball. So I hate to tell <laughs> certain folks this, but you guys made Kylie and this book from Hebrew, Hebrews from Hebrews to Negroes. You guys are probably in, in the way you've gone after Kylie. You're responsible for thousands and thousands of sales of that book. Because I'm speaking to you as somebody I never would have. I wouldn't have cared if Kylie had, had texted that to me. You know, I have nothing against Kylie. I mean, yeah, Kylie, Mr. Irving. I have nothing against the brother, but. Hey, okay, well, he texts this, it's about a movie, and I'm not particularly interested. Unless it was a, unless he specifically said, hey, this is a, a documentary on basketball or this basketball player, you guys ought to check it out. I want everybody listening to this podcast to be real clear about something. Kylie Irving is under tremendous attack, not for what he said. He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything about Jewish folk. Nothing. He didn't say anything about Judaism. Nothing. He just tweeted a link to this movie from Negroes, from Hebrews to Negroes. That's all he did. They cannot produce one Twitter link statement or whatever where Kylie is saying, hey, this is a great movie. You guys need to check it out. He didn't so much as say, hey, this is an interesting movie. You guys ought to check it out. He just tweeted the link. That's all he did. And look at this firestorm of attacks on this guy. Let me repeat this. Kylie said nothing. Nothing. He didn't say anything about Jewish folk, Judaism, nothing. He didn't even... uh, praise the book or condemn the book. He didn't say much of anything. Well, it was a movie. Uh, uh, he, he tweeted a link to the movie. He didn't so much as say the, the movie was right, the movie was wrong. We had mixed feelings about the movie. He didn't even say anything about the movie. That's, those are facts, people. Those are facts. Don't act like those are facts. And look at this firestorm of attacks against this man. For saying nothing. He didn't say anything. Now, I, I, I want to go over some of these demands that came from his basketball uh, franchise. You know, he I think he plays for the Brooklyn Nets. And they put out this statement that Kylie must meet these, they, they, they're demanding that he meet these six conditions. Folks, these aren't requests, these aren't suggestions, these are demands. And I want you to think about every one of these demands. And I want you to think about it and say to yourself, what did this man say? What did this man do? Let me tell you what he, what he said. Nothing. I'm going to tell you what he did. He tweeted a link to the movie from Hebrews to Negroes. That's it. Those are facts. 
Here are the demands. Apologize and condemn movie. Why? Apologize about what? Apologize about a movie that someone else produced? Apologize about a movie that someone else directed? Apologize about a movie that someone else is distributing? No, by the way, uh, one of the people distributing this movie is Amazon. You show me one person. Jewish, Christian, Muslim, black, white, conservative, liberal, up, down, left, right, who has criticized Amazon for distributing this movie. Oh, they jumped all over Kylie Irving. And they're demanding he, the single individual, who so happens to be a black man, they're demanding, first demand, he apologize and condemn. As far as I know, ain't no one publicly condemned Jeff Bezos and say, hey, hey, boy, uh, you need to stop distributing this movie. So they want a Kylie to apologize and condemn. Okay. Number two, $500,000 donation to anti-hate group. Folks, let me tell you something. This is one thing I learned when I was an undergraduate. Ask people to define their terms. Try to get a better, a clear, clear understanding of what they mean by something. So that so that you can give, you know, a, a clear, better response to to what they're saying. So that you can really understand what they're what they're trying to say to you. First thing that should come to your mind is anti hate group. How many groups out there would say, "Oh yeah, I'm pro hate." <laughs> you know, I'm pro hate here. Let me, where's the pro-hate petition? I'll sign up for that. I'm pro-hate. What does that mean, anti-hate? And what's an anti-hate group? How are you defining anti-hate and how are you defining an anti-hate group? Because Kylie might say, oh, okay, I don't mind giving $500,000 to the Nation of Islam. Oh, no, no, can't do that. Oh, okay, well, I don't mind giving $500,000 to Riza Islam. Oh, no, no, can't do that. Oh. I don't mind giving uh, five hundred thousand uh, dollars to uh, to the Moors, to a Moorish temple. Oh no, no, can't do that. Well, how are you defining anti-hate, and what, in your definition, is an anti-hate group? And folks, let me tell you something else too. I run a nonprofit. I never want anyone to feel compelled to give me a check. Now, if someone gave me a check and they felt compelled to do that, if they were forced to do so, I would still take the check and deposit it, there's no doubt. And I would use it very wisely. And I would try to use it in a way that, uh, and I would contact the person. i say, look, I know you were forced to make this donation. I'm going to go ahead and, and deposit it, but I, I want to know, you know what you're sort of expecting from me. And I, cause I will keep you updated on how the money was used. But any ethical person would say, man, I really don't feel right about you being forced to donate to me. Why you? What kind of donation is it when you're forcing someone, you're twisting someone's arm to donate? Mm. People, I, I'll be honest with you, I find that suspicious. You want to force someone? To give to an anti-hate group. And how are you defining anti-hate? Now, how are you defining an anti-hate group? I just find this suspicious that you do that. And oh, by the way, Kylie has given uh, donations, tens of thousands of dollars of, of uh, donations to groups. Third, third demand, sensitivity training. That's comical beyond belief. What the heck does that mean? What the heck does that mean? I tell you what it means. They're probably going to get some touchy-feely. Uh, black women who are going to come in and they're going to talk about their feelings and blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, they're black and they're women. They're doubly oppressed. And they're and more than likely be very, very liberal in their politics. Sensitivity training. Shut up. Kylie wouldn't uh, brought on the Brooklyn Nets because of his sensitivity. He's brought on because of his basketball skills. Because he's committed to 
becoming the best he can possibly be as a basketball player, the best he could possibly be in his position on the team. And there for no sensitivity. Oh, Kyle, you know, you, Kyla, you rate number seven out of ten on the sensitivity scale. Yeah, heck yeah, we're going to give you this multi-million dollar donation, a multi-million dollar contract. Don't be stupid. Then we're going to give him anti-Semitic training. Well, what does that mean? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're a thinking person, you're going to ask yourself, well, what's Semitic and what's anti-Semitic? What does that mean? Because I guarantee you there's some folks out there, probably inclu- including Kylie, uh, Kylie Irving, who may not define sensitivity training the way the Brooklyn Nets. Anti-Semitic, they were not, Kylie probably does not define or understand anti-Semitic or Semitic in the same way the Brooklyn Nets do. I can almost pretty well uh, guarantee you that. So, again, what are we talking about here? What are some definitions here? And, again, what what is the point in forcing somebody to do this? What are you trying to accomplish in forcing someone to do this, twisting their arm to do it? Now, here's, here's my message to Kylie Irving. Brother, I wouldn't go into that, that anti-Semitic training, that sensitivity training. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I would ask, hey, you know, you need to go ahead and trade me because he's he's a darn good basketball player. And I'm sure there's another team out there who could use him and use him to to and and he'd be a part of that team winning some games and maybe get into the playoffs and, and from there on to a championship. Brother. And here's the other thing I'd say to Kylie, and I hope so, wish somebody could get this to him. Brother, I'm a big believer in Holocaust education. We have a rabbi here. um, in Kentucky, and he taught me a lot. He's taught me a lot about Holocaust education. On your own, per something that you're moved by your heart to do, go check out a Holocaust museum. It's it's worthwhile. My daughter visited one in Florida. I visited one in Texas. Brother, if I had the money and the time, I would go visit the Holocaust um, Museum in Israel. And they also offer some Holocaust uh, training. It is it is very good, brother. It's very good. And I don't care wh- what your faith is. Uh, I think you'll find it very moving and informative. It doesn't matter what your faith is. Uh, the Holocaust is something. And I know your heart. Kylie, I know you'd probably start crying when you see some of that stuff. You've seen those pictures and all. It's cause, because they're lying about you when they say that you're an anti-Semitic, that you hate people. Brother, I know you're lying. And all sorts of black folk all throughout the United States of America, we know they're lying about that. So ignore those lies, brother. Go check out the Holocaust Museum on your own. You know, when you feel moved by the Lord, the Spirit of God to do it. And if you could ever possibly go to um, a Holocaust Museum in Israel, please do that. And don't tell other folks about it. You know, don't tell the media about it. Don't don't tell the uh, with the ADL about it. Just do this because you feel moved by the Spirit of God to do that. You go check that out on your own. Um, you know I've I've received ever learned I've received a lot of information. You know I've been like I said my daughter's been the one. I've been to a Holocaust museum. I've I've on YouTube. You know I checked out some things about the. Uh, but the you know, Holocaust education they, they, they offer there. And I've spoken to a rabbi. And uh, actually, if you go to my website, booktalkwithcorbin.com, you'll see an interview I have with a rabbi about we do have a need for Holocaust education uh, here in the United States. There is a need for it. I think there's a great need for it. I don't think schools should be required, public schools should be required to, should be required to do it. I don't think they should be compelled to do it. But if they feel there's something they want to offer, then they should voluntarily do that. But really, this is something that should come from a person's heart. This is something couples, families should do. Um, if you have children, please uh, go check it out. But don't don't tell the ADL. Don't tell the Brooklyn Nets. And don't have these knuckleheads. That's what I said, knuckleheads. And the ADL and the Brooklyn Nets force you, force you, compel you, twist your arm to go uh, 
receive some Holocaust education. Here's the other. Meet with ADL leaders. Why? Do you get beat up? I mean, why? They're not there to, to listen to you. They're there to lecture you. They're there to tell you what to think and how to think. It. That's it. What, what's the point? What's 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 the point of a meeting like that? It's a different matter if the ADL said, "Well, hey, brother, when you get some time, we'd love to sit down with you over dinner, lunch, whatever, breakfast, whatever it might be, share a meal with you, and we want to share our feelings with you, and we want you." to share your feelings and thoughts with us. Why? Because we want to form a friendship. That's it. That's it. We want to form a friendship. We want to form a a good, healthy, ongoing relationship. And that relationship is not going to be based upon you have to think this way and you cannot watch this and you cannot read this. Of course, Kylie, Mr. Irvin, he ain't saying that to ADL, but the ADL is saying that to him. That's that's not a that's not the way to do that, brother Irving. When you feel comfortable to speak to the ADL, you should do that. But I wouldn't tell anybody. I wouldn't make it public. I would just pick up the phone. Actually, I would really just try to find a rabbi and say, Rabbi, I just want to sit down and talk to you about some things. I want to share some of my thoughts and feelings with you. And I'm sure a true rabbi. We'll say, yeah, brother, it's no problem. And yeah, we'll do it um, in confidence. I could recommend a couple of rabbis to you who I know would love to sit down and talk with you, love to share with you, love to learn from you, and uh, would keep that meeting confidential. And here's the last one. Meet with Joe. I can't pronounce the last name, T-S-A-I. And someone told me, I think he's the owner of something like that, of the Brooklyn Nets. Man, screw him. He's your boss. If he wants to talk to you about, hey, bro, um, what do we have to do to get into the playoffs? What do we have to do at the championship? Oh, yeah. You need to meet with him in a heartbeat. If he wants to talk to you about, you know, renewing your contract, renegotiating your contract, offering you some, maybe offering you some more money based on performance, offering you some bonus money. Oh, yeah. Sit down and talk. No problem. Maybe he wants to talk to you about trading you to another team. Yeah, okay, bro. Now, you know, if it's something like that, I say, no, man, you can talk to my agent about that. But, you know, if he just wanted to do that, you have no problem. Maybe he wants to talk to you about, you know, uh, Kylie, Mr. Irving, man, I want to sit down and talk with you about uh, partial ownership in the Brooklyn Nets or, or show you, teach you how you can get partial ownership in another basketball team. Other than that, no. 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 Just let them know. No. My name is Kunta Kente. It's not Toby. And I'm not going to change it. I don't care how many times, you know, you, you demand a meeting with me. Of course, it's not just a meeting with him. It's a meeting with him. And you have to show him, prove to him that you're, you're you know, hey, I'm sorry. Are you serious? Are you serious? Do you understand? He has a demand like that that clearly demonstrates having no respect for you whatsoever. I teach young people. Hey, young man, come here. I need to talk to you. I don't. I don't sit there and. And when, when you, you know, when we go in my office or wherever, we sort of go to the side. I'm not sitting there saying, hey, bro, what's going on? You know, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think? We're not equal. I'm letting him know I'm disappointed in what you did. I don't want to see that happen again. Or sometimes I'm, I'm praising him. But we're not equal. We're not equal. That's not why I've, I've initiated that conversation. We're not equal. He's He's not saying that. You know, hey, man to man, mono to mono, whatever. He's not saying that. He's saying, here, boy, come here, boy. What's wrong with you, man? You, uh, you better show me a different, a different attitude right now. That's what he said. You know that. You know that. Folks, this is a true American pod. This is a true American podcast. Uh, I'm your host, 
please like, share, subscribe to this uh, to this podcast. Tell others about it. And if you can get it to uh, Mr. Irving, please do. And, uh, man, I'll probably be saying some more things about this because the more I research this, the more I research this, man, it really gets under my, my it really, it really irritates the heck out of me. Mr. Irving, it's very important that you, brother, look, I understand if you think at one point you may have to grovel a little bit in order to save your, your basketball career. I get that. You got a lot of, you probably got a lot of people dependent on you. You know, you've helped out a lot of people. You probably want to help out a lot of more people. I, brother, I get that, honestly. You know, I can't, I can't come close to, to paying your bills. I can't come close to helping your family the way you would help your family. I understand that. But just to the best of your ability, try to do it in such a way that you let that, <laughs> what's his name, Joe, whatever, and people like him, let them know. Bro, you've you've waged economic warfare against the wrong black man. Always remember this, Kylie. When you get a chance, read the autobiography that Frederick Douglass wrote. I think it's called "The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass" or "The Narrative of Frederick Douglass" or something like that. It's, it's it's not a big book, but it's very powerful. In that book. Frederick Douglass talks about when he became a free man. And brother, let me tell you something. I, I, I studied this book when I was at undergraduate at uh, when I was at Berea College, and my professor was Dr. Cleophas Charles, brilliant man, totally blind, brilliant. And Dr. You know, we read the book, and Dr. Charles asked the question. He said, "Okay, when did uh, Frederick Douglass become a free man?" As you know, Frederick Douglass was born in slavery. And so we said, what, oh, 1863? No. Oh, 1865? No. Oh, when he when he escaped? No. What do you mean, no? Well, when, Dr. Charles? Dr. Charles said, Frederick Douglass told you in the book. <laughs> we, we were ticked at Dr. Charles. Listen, Kylie, listen. Listen to what I'm saying, brother. Don't turn us off yet. Mr. Irving, please listen. And we were like, we thought Dr. Charles was crazy. So Dr. Charles said, turn to such and such a chapter, turn to such and such a page, read this. And what what he had told us to read was where the slave master and Douglas, the slave, they got in a fight. I mean, a knockdown, drag out fight. And then at one point, the the white slave master said, stop, stop, look. Can you just go ahead and do this? He asked them. One to one, man to man, can you do this for me? Before, he was like, look here, Negro. You do what I tell you to do. I'm telling you to go to sensitivity training. I'm telling you to do anti, anti-Semitic anti training. I'm telling you to donate to this group. I'm telling you to condemn this movie. I'm telling you to meet with me and to show me uh, that you're uh, 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 apologetic or whatever. I'm telling you, no. Hey. That was his attitude before the fight. And then during the fight, he dropped that attitude. Yeah, Joe (laughs) dropped that attitude. And then he said, the slave master said to Frederick Douglass, look, can you do this? And Frederick said, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. I mean, it was a knockdown drag out. And Frederick did the task. And he said, at that point, he realized that man is no better than me, and I'm no better than him. I'm a man. He's a man. And it was at that point Frederick Douglass knew that he had a lib- he became a lib- he his he became a liberated ma- man in his mind, and therefore his physical oppression was untenable. There's no way he would have been able to to continue to live with shackles on his body. Because the shackles are on his mind had come off. Read that book, brother. I'm telling you. Falls right in line with the miseducation of the Negro by Dr. Uh, Charles Woodson. By Dr. Woodson. Falls right in line with the teachings of Robert Sabukwe in South Africa. Stephen Bantubiko in South Africa. I remember one time some uh, some guy 
<laughs> I think it was George Clinton. He said, free your mind, your butt will follow. <laughs> I'll never forget that. So that's what Dr. Charles was trying to teach us. He said, when his mind was free, when he realized, man, I, I can't, no, I can't live this way anymore. I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm a man. Like, he's a man. He's no better than me. I'm no better than him. So why is he my master? Why is he calling me in to speak to him and show him a, a trish, you know, show him that I'm sorry? Why is he demanding I do this, do that? I'll tell you why he's doing that, brother. Because he has that master mentality. He doesn't respect you. But, brother, you have a liberated mind now. <laughs> You're like Frederick Douglass, man. You're like Carter G. Dr. Woodson. You're like Robert Subukwe, Stephen Bantubiko. You got that liberated mind. Your your physical oppression is just going to become untenable. It's, it's just nothing you're going to be able to live with. So just bear that in mind, bro, as you go. You know, just bear that in mind. And hey, man, it wasn't until much later that Frederick Douglass literally, you know, ran away. So, man, you don't have to make any dramatic changes now. You can just... You already know where you're at mentally, so okay. Okay, so, you know, just bide your time, man. You know, make that money, bro. You know, put that money away. Invest that money. Put that money in the stock market. Create some, uh, create a foundation or two. Quietly, behind the scenes, discreetly, give money to groups that you want to give it to. Go play with, you know, go play. Play your heart out. Become one of the best basketball players you can be. Hone your craft, bro. Just slowly and just quietly, discreetly do that. Because there's going to be a point in your life you're going to be like Frederick Douglass then. Boom! You're out there. And look at all that Douglass accomplished. Look at all the what he did. Booker T. Washington. Robert Sabuque, Dr. Woodson, go on and on like that. But, you know, you just bide your time, man. But we all know what these six demands are they're coming from. We all know they're nonsense. Brother Kylie, we know. We know, brother. We know. This is the True American Podcast. I'm your host. Please like, subscribe, share. Um, share this podcast. Thank you.